one year anniversary of Caitlin's Reef. I set up this tank a year ago today and I set it up specifically for that tiny fish right there. But to recap, it's a 27 gallon aquarium that has no holes drilled in it. The filtration was live rock, live sand, and uh, an air stone, <laughs> plus water changes. Set up this tank a year ago. I did a video about it showing you how it went through the 21 day cycle. I know there's ways to do it more quickly, but I used live rock and the live rock had to go through a curing phase. So it kind of just took care of itself. How often do I do those water changes? about once a month. And so when I do a water change, I siphon the sand bed and I remove about 10 gallons of water. And then I put in 10 gallons of new salt water. And that's it. That it's a very, very simple tank to maintain. I clean the glass more frequently than I do anything. The polycarbonate top that keeps the wall from getting covered in spatter, that right there is solid except for notches for this light fixture, which is an AI prime. And then I have a spot here for a pH probe and I've got a notch for the wires and the tubing that goes to the heater and everything, including this new uh, filter that I added, which is a CHA Shark Pro filter. And if there was ever a power outage, this tank was standing alone with no way to survive versus my reef that has a backup. So I wanted an air pump that ran no matter what. And I knew I could just plug in a very small air pump that uses three watts into a UPS, which is the same thing you would plug in a computer into and give it some time until I can get out the generator and fire that up to get the entire house full of power again. The Hydros controller allows me to keep track of certain things like the temperature of the tank and the pH, of course, but it also lets me know if, for example, the heater isn't working, which happened last week. It just wasn't pulling any wattage, and so I had a little red tile that was saying it's using one watt when it should be using 100. <laughs> so I had to fiddle with it, and I discovered that the heater kind of worked, but then a few days later it wasn't. So I was being notified through a controller, so I'm really glad I added one. I specifically like the Hydros controller for a water change because I can hit a button on the app itself, stop the flow and everything happening in the tank for 15 minutes. It turns off the heater, it turns off the Nero 5, it turns off the air stone, and it, that's it. It turns those things off and I have 15 minutes to get the water out and get the new water in and it all restarts by itself without me remembering to have to plug something back in. Also, I added another timer for that Shark Pro. So when I put food in the tank, I hit a button and it stops it for 10 minutes. So it's not filtering the food out as fast as it hits the water. I chose to stock this tank with some really easy creatures. So it's zoanthids and there is some gorgonians in there. And uh, that's pretty much it. There's also algae in there and that was on purpose. The live rock came with all kinds of cool life on it. And I wanted to see if it would survive and grow in the tank. I thought that was very natural. I kind of thought that's what Caitlin would do. So there's not an abundance of cleanup crew in this tank because I don't want them to mow it down and destroy it. Now it can get a little bit out of control and from time to time I have to go in there and really tidy it up. And I wish it was actually cleaner looking, but this is the best I can manage. The, uh, the best part for me is that it's all doing really well with minimal amount of effort on my part. There are a couple of LPS creatures in there. There's the walking dendro, which I've had for years, and I put it in here a year ago, and it walks around the sand bed. It's really cool, and I enjoy it. And again, it's a creature that doesn't need a lot of TLC. And then I added a frog spawn recently, which I thought would add some nice color. Under the right lighting conditions, this tank can really glow, but I don't run that blue cycle all day long. I only do that for the very end of the day, just for my own personal enjoyment. Speaking of lighting, my schedule is from 3 p.m. in the afternoon until 11.30 at night. So it's not a super long day either. I don't see any reason to run lights longer for this tank because it's zoanthids and there's some fish. And I don't have to have a big long duration. I just want to have something nice for the afternoon and evening. And this has worked out really well. Every single night I feed the tank with a mixture of Rod's food and some PE mysis and I squirt it in. And let me tell you, I recently added a Randall Gobi to replace another one that I had lost. And I think I accidentally killed it. So when I got the new one, I discovered something really special about this fish. It loves to come out and swim all over the place, especially after food, where the previous one stayed in its hole and would only come up far enough that if food blew by, it would take a bite. And that was kind of disappointing. I couldn't appreciate this fish. But this one swims out, abandons its pistol shrimp, and then will go find the pistol shrimp if it has to go swim down a hole and tell them, hey, buddy, I'm still with you, and they pair up again. So to wrap up, I've done probably 12 water changes in 12 months. I feed the tank every single day, and I have a air stone in there to protect the tank against a power outage that'll keep oxygen and a little bit of current happening in the water column. Other than that, just have to clean the glass and then share it with you guys from time to time on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see where we are a year from now.